Hey, good morning. Let's go over today's trade plan. So in the overnight session, the market has been quite mixed because even though ES managed to push to a new marginal high beyond Friday's high, the push to that new high was pretty swiftly rejected. And um, at this point, the market is back down near Friday's VPOC. And uh, if we look at the other markets, NASDAQ is in a similar situation. And uh, so far, there is a negative divergence that has been setting up between uh, the ES and TF. So TF has been relatively weak compared to the other markets. And uh, if we look at the last few days, we can see that TF hasn't really been participating in this upside move at the level that uh, you know we've seen in the S&P and NQ. So whenever you have this type of situation where uh, there's this pretty significant negative divergence developing between uh, S&P and Russell, uh, typically either you get a catch-up move in the Russell where it actually moves to the upside and catches up or it just weighs down on the other markets and um, it, it makes it harder for the other markets to actually continue going higher at the same pace and um, eventually it can even result in a correction where the other markets actually crack and um, make a downside move essentially coming back into sync uh, with the Russell. So there is this disconnect underneath the surface that is uh, setting up and uh, it's something to be aware of and just it's a caution point and a risk point in the market. So very two-sided overnight session, uh, very mixed markets worldwide and um, also running on pretty light volume. So heading into the open we do have to be taking all that into account and be a little bit more cautious when initiating trades. So off the open, the immediate support is 14.75 to 16 quarter. And as long as we can hold above that and then start trading above the prior VPOC of 2019, then it would open the door to fill the gap at 25 half and test the 26 to 28 initial resistance zone. Uh, failure to hold 14.75 to 16 quarter would be a red flag in itself and uh, bring the low from Friday into play, the 10 half to 12 half initial support zone. That is still an area where responsive buyers can defend and be active. But again, we do have to look at the underlying environment and uh, make sure that we're not seeing a balance breakdown or a breakdown on uh, broad market weakness where the Russell is completely reversing uh, the recent upside move, um, in which case we can get a move down into even 0.575 to 0.775. And uh, then, you know, the final spot would be 2000, 2002, which is the start of that uh, stronger breakout from a couple of days ago. So right now, uh, you know, that strong downside continuation move is not in play because the volume has been so light. And, uh, you know, overall, all the markets are kind of just balancing at a range. So we would have to see strong downside momentum, um, very weak internals and a pickup in volume in order to uh, consider that downside move, especially a strong downside move. Until then, you know, the markets can be pretty mixed where uh, responsive buyers are still active on first test of support, and then we just kind of balance and arrange. And um, overall, you know, we don't really go anywhere fast. So that's something we'll have to see off the open, whether there is a pickup in volume, whether uh, there is sustained downside momentum that can suggest a continuation move lower. But until then, we have to treat this as a two-sided balanced market. You know, we are trading at a important inflection point up here, uh, even near the 2628. And then we have some better resistance zones above. So the expectation was that it would take a little bit of time to process these areas. These are larger time frame uh, resistance areas. And uh, so far, you know, that has been playing out. But even at earlier levels. So 2628 primary upside target as long as we can hold uh, 1475 to 16 quarter and ideally uh, you know we hold above 2019 then that can lead to a test of 26 to 28. Uh, given the weakness in the other markets uh, you know we do want to be careful with our exits on the long side as well and um, if we're getting a decent enough exit near the gap fill near the initial resistance zone and we're not really seeing a big catch-up move in the Russell, then probably a good idea to uh, exit over there. Uh, beyond 26.28, the resistance zone that's really in play would be the 
35 half to 38 half and uh, that's an area where responsive sellers can again be active on first test and then as we move higher we start running into stronger resistance areas and uh, they can be more of a hurdle first time up so th the main idea is that so far we're in a very two-sided market uh, we have to be careful on both sides currently in the S&P the larger time frame bias continues to be bullish short term very balanced very two-sided volume is light uh, which typically means more chop and more balance and that's why uh, you know I mentioned earlier that if we're gonna get a directional move um, or a wider range then we should see a pickup in volume um, and so far we haven't seen that of course it's still uh, the globex session but off the open we'll see if there is a pickup in volume and then also keep an eye on the Russell uh, you know to see whether it's maintaining at least above Friday's low and uh, if it fails to do so then you know that can put some selling pressure on the S&P and Nasdaq so right now it is a uh, you know very uh, I would say not necessarily very high risk market but uh, because of these disconnects and divergences uh, it makes it a little bit more two-sided and uh, the reward potential can be less on trades just because of the lack of follow-through so we have to take the whole environment into account and that really is what tells us how aggressive to be how conservative to be right now it makes more sense to be a bit more conservative rather than uh, be more aggressive so that's the environment we're in that's the picture that's in front of us right now uh, let's see if the buy side can hold ES above the pre-market support let's keep an eye on the Russell to uh, make sure that we're not getting a complete reversal or breakdown that can definitely lead to uh, selling pressure in the other markets those are our main ideas. Let's see how it plays out off the open, and we'll take it from there.